ko iti he iti mapi he pona mu he kākano i ruia mai i rangiatia i poi poi ana i te mata o te whenua i tana kura kau papa Māori. I kore ai e ngaro ka tū pakere tū rangatirai, hei rau kura mō tōna iwi. Welcome to Mata with me, Mihingarangi Forbes, brought to you by Te Māngai Pāho and the Public Interest Journalism Fund. He nui ngā kaupapa hei wānanga. Soon we'll discuss the race for Tāmaki Makoto, taxing the rich and the Māori role option. Ingari hei aho tāhuhu i tēnei hōtaka. Last week the Waitangi Tribunal heard an urgent claim from the body which represents Kura Kaupapa Māori, Māori Immersion Schools. Te, runga, te runanga nui uh, o ngā Kura Kaupapa Māori asserts the Crown continues to marginalise and fail Māori in the education system and in 207 years they still haven't got it right. It comes as Māori stand-down rates in mainstream schools continue to soar, while in Kura Kaupapa they're barely a blip. Hoi anō hei whakamahuki i te kremi, ko hono mai te tumuaki takirua o te runanga nui o ngā kurukau papa Māori, a ko Rāwari Wright. Tēnā koe te rangatira? Mi ngā rangi, tēnā koe o te rā, tēnā koutou. Last year, te runanga nui o ngā kurukau papa Māori filed an urgent claim before the Waitangi Tribunal on behalf of 63 uh, kura uh, involving 6,500 tauira. Uh, hea te putake o te kremi, can you explain it to us? We'll go straight to what we're um, looking for, and that is to establish um, a parallel um, education option, not system, option. Um, and it needs to be parallel because um, there's nothing separatist about this. This is about embodying the, the tenets, the, the intentions, um, the principles of Te Tiriti or Waitangi. And, but it's, it's saying, you're dead right. 207 years education has been in this country and but they still take it out they haven't got it right yet what we're saying and what we're asking for is give us the ability the agency and the authority over the kopapa matauranga uh, matauranga kopapa maori option and allow us to um there that um, talk us through Te Aho Matua, because Te, Te, Te Aho Matua is the founding, um, am I right to say, curriculum, like it's different to what we learn in, what our tawera learn in ed, uh, mainstream education. What is the difference? What is Te Aho Matua? Correct. It is a philosophical do document, but it is also uh, the framework upon which Te Marautanga, the curriculum of Te Aho Matua, Kura, Kura Kaupu Ma Aho Matua, is... Um, is managed um, and is presented to Tamariki. Um, it's presented in uh, six parts. And what we say is if we get these five parts right, get them right, what we'll end up with is the type of person, the type of uh, tamaiti, who that is described in section six. So the sections are the two akiri o te tangata, te reo, ngā iwi, te ao, ahuatanga aku. Um, and what we say is that you have to appeal to the to the heart of the Tamaiti first. You know, um, you can go to any school in the country and you can learn some Māori or more Māori. You can do kapahaka, you can do all those sorts of things. You can get NCA credits, but in Te Kurakaupapa Māori, it's about Tamariki knowing who they are first. A ngako, a wairua, in their heart and in the essence of their spirituality. So that um, if that's right, that's where resilience comes from. That's where confidence comes from. That's where the willingness to give things a go comes from. That's where the desire to learn comes from. And so we spend a lot of time concentrating on that. That's not part of what happens in Kura Ono. In your evidence, um, you've said that Kura Kaupapa Māori and Te Aho Matua is not only about the revitalisation of te reo, but it's everything in Te Aho Māori. Yeah. When you think about those tawera, those raukura that have come through over those 40 years, give us some examples of what you mean, you know, post-kura. Well, we now have raukura doing anything. We, you know, when we started, when we started in this kaupapa over 30 years ago, one of our mantras was that, you know, we are building, we are preparing a generation of kids to take on jobs that haven't even been invented yet. 
And the fact that you are presenting this program now, Mihinarangi, is testament to that. There are now how many Māori production houses in Te Aohangara TV production? Um, Māori radio stations, Māori television, it was just a dream. Now, and who do we see predominantly filling those spaces? Kura Kaupapa Māori Ahomatua kids. You know? mm. they, um, they're everywhere. They're flying planes. They're being doctors. They're being lawyers. They're being accountants. They, they're doing all sorts of things. They are, um, but they see the world through a different lens, mm. you know, and they interact with people differently. Um, and, and that is the unique nature of the whole matu. Whaka kia te ngākau, whaka kia te wairua, kia matua mōhio te te maiti, ko waiia, so that they know, you know, to the Aye. roots of their being, who they are. Dr Cathy Jews and her evidence says that uh, the relationship with the Ministry and the Crown is at breaking point because the Ministry of Education has no right really to... Um, you know, to, to be in charge of uh, Kura Kaupapa Māori. If you are to be listened to, how do you safely um, divorce, yourself, divorce yourselves from the Crown? What's a mana-enhancing kind of structure for Kura Kaupapa Māori? Nice analogy. There will be no divorce, but there would be some serious intervention. If we take the... Um, if we understand that, you know, in the political arena at the moment, you've got party political politics, you've got state responsibility, and you've got departmental functions. And at the moment, the um, party political politics is trumping everything. Never mind that the state has a responsibility in relation to the embodiment of the Treaty of Waitangi, Te Tiriti Rane, to protect these taonga. Um, that's not being fulfilled because the party politics is getting in the way. Therefore, the departmental functions, which is where we are aiming, is the um, the kaupapahere and the policies and the ture are insufficient to guarantee the development and the safety and the, uh, um, the longevity of this kaupapa. The kaupapa Matauranga Māori Ake. Now, the Crown has that responsibility, but more importantly, it is our responsibility as Māori. Right? Pākehā can't do it. Taui, we can't do it. No amount of legislation is going to do mm. it. But what we can do, what the legislation and the policies can do, is to allow us, again, to have that agency and the authority, because we are the protectors. We are the kaitiaki of reo, tikanga, Matauranga, Tirohanga, perspective, will be a perspective. Um, we have to do that. Tahia can't do it. Tēnā koe, te rangatira, um, and the claims continue next month. Tēnā koe, Kia ora. Uh, tēnā heirunanga i tērā uiuitanga, me ngā take nui o te wā, e tahuri atu nei tātou ki te taumata kōrero o mata. Joining the pai this week are two of Tāmaki's finest residents. She puts the royal back into Royal Oak, AUT Dean of Law, Kylie Quince, and he is a pautaku manua not only of ngā whariwā te marae, but also Clark's Beach Golf Club. Murma Chair, Bernie O'Donnell, tēnā kōrua. Kia ora, tēnā. 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 Now, um, I don't know if uh, Rauri actually knows my age, but uh, <laughs> I'm way too old to uh, catch the uh, wave of kura, unfortunately, and we all are. But we've all been, um, mm. it's all been important and significant to all of us as mamas mm. and aunties and the rest of it, and also for the survival, uh, survival of te reo Māori. Um, Bernie, you know, you, mm. you're one of the generations that have had to fight hard to regain your reo. Mm. How important is this claim? Uh, it's everything. Uh, it, it, it's an iteration of what some of us have been talking about for some time now. Mm. Um, because what we continue to be subjected to is the message from the Crown, which is called Te Reo Te Take. I, I worry about that because it, it's taken from the from the petition. Mm. And, and what they've done is they've just taken that bit, bit and, and ignored the, the Māori liberation, the Tino Rangatiratanga narratives that came with that march. Yeah. And if we continue to, um, to, to prioritise Te Reo Te Take, you end up in the spaces that are, the kura are talking about. 
yeah, just on that, so I, I was fortunate enough to learn my deal and uh, the watch and, and te akitanga of, of Huirangi Waikirepuru. Mm. He never talked about te reo in isolation of, of tikanga. Aye. He never talked about language in isolation of the people. He always talked about te reo meona tikanga. And he talked about what mana mutuhake needed to be, what role that played in terms of us mm. progressing the deal. We're at, a, we're, at a, we're at a stage now where if we don't start to pull that back, it can't be all the Crown's way and start to say, no, no, mm. yeah, this is our real. Ma, ma te Māori, ma te Māori, mō te Māori. Mm. Ma tātou, mō tātou is, is the kaupa we should be pushing back on or else we're just going to end up in the same space that our kura kaupapa are at the moment. Is that they're, lo they're losing all that ma tauranga Māori, all those promises of, of mana mō mm. for the sake of the revitalisation of language in isolation of everything else. Mm. What would it, what could an option look like? Would it be something like kōhanga, which is a statutory body, um, I think? But you know, when when you listen to Rawiri there, what are you thinking in terms of outcomes yeah. of the of the claim? So, um, as Bernie said and as Rawiri alluded to, pa partly uh, Kathy Jews and, and Rawiri have framed the claim around mana motuhaki, mm. w which could lead to an independent Māori education authority. Mm. One of the problems there is that, of course, Minister Davis uh, explicitly ruled that out uh, just over a year ago, and yet the body of Māori education experts, Te Paeroa, mm. that he established over a year ago has come out and asked for exactly that. So if the tribunal was aligned with that whakaaro, then we could be seeing a recommendation. And, of course, that is that is the tribunal's bread and butter. They are a recommendatory body, largely. Um, but, but clearly what they're looking for, as I already mentioned, is a, a parallel option and equity of funding. And that, that's mm. around, so there are two separate things. Mana motuhake, so the, the right to be independent and, and mm. as Bernie said, to go off and, and really nurture uh, te mm. matua, mm. uh, but also in a way that is equitable vis-a-vis -vis all of the other you know, tauira Māori mm, mm. Ac across the country. So there are currently funding options, for example, for big capital works for mm. kura that kura are exempt from because of the numbers. Now, that, that's just mm. straight out racist and inequitable. Mm. So those kinds of recommendations, whether they're embedded in policy or perhaps stat statute, those are the kinds of things that we'd be looking for. Mm. Why would, you know, Calvin Davis say something like that when you're clearly looking at this, you know, at the facts and what we see I said in the intro is that in mainstreams, you know, kids, Māori kids are falling out of mainstream, whereas kura is providing what Rawiri said is not just tauira raukura, they are filling all the big jobs mm. um, and they have been for the last couple of decades. The, problem, the challenge for, for the minister is he comes from the education sector, which is telling him that the things that they do are the right things and mm. they know best. That's, that's, that's not... That, that's offensive and if we if we frame that in today's context that's not right listen if, if we if we want to start to explore the opportunity that opportunity that mana motuhake provides mm. let's just start calling it something else if we need to call it co-governance and it's and it's in its entirety let's just call it co-governance it's not a it's not a new conversation i mean the, you know as i said before this government is prepared to have those kind of conversations with party constructs mm. have them with our own had them about what does the language look like for our for our mokopuna moving forward. Is it just a, does it just belong in the kura? Does it and if it belongs in in the homes, then how do we start to to build our fo footprint beyond what we know in terms of a Māori space? Education is key to be to be able to change that, but it can't be left up to the crown to do their own things. Surely, one of the things that we've learned in terms of the mistakes we've made in the in a Waitangi. And our tribunal, tri tribunal claims is that this is about what Te Tiriti promised. Te Tiriti in its entirety promised partnership. Mm. It's not partnership. Mm. Um, Dr Cathy Drew says in her evidence that, you know, Te Ahumatua, the education system doesn't even understand what Te Ahumatua does. So what right does a, what does a Crown have trying to, um, you know, to house, to run, to oversee a kaupapa that, mm. that they don't understand? Well it, well, it really doesn't, and that comes down to a fundamental lack of lack of respect and, and probably really fear about mm. uh, being fearful of things you don't know about, which is obviously where the current co-governance um, pushback has come from, is just a lack of understanding. So mm. um, th they need to get over themselves, <laughs> really, in respect yeah. of that. Must be tough for Māori MPs, eh? Because, you know, so many of them have had so much to do with kura kaupapa, ko hangareo, and know the value of it. No, I think the challenge for this government, because a lot of them are our own, if we haven't really tested that relationship, and I think it's it's coming to the to a head now, where we start to go beyond just the you know the 
the, the amical sort of respectful relationships that we've built up start to really test the waters in terms of saying, well, that's not what I mm. envisage mana motuhaki to be. That's not what I envisage equity to be. What are you going to do about it? Mm. You've signed up to say you're going to, you, you know, that, that why, are, why, why should Māori communities and iwi be excited about what this government brings us? More Māori in Parliament means what? The same kind of thinking that previous governments have had? Or are we, we really going to start to see the changes but not changes as they believe them to be, but changes as our kura kaupapa intelligence is talking about and as our people are talking about. So around Māori and Oz, we've talked about that, that now, around 670,000 New Zealanders in Australia are on our special category visas, including 380,000 who arrived after 2001. They'll now be eligible to apply for citizenship. Uh, also a change of the settings and the deportation rules. Uh, we will see a significant m number of Māori who were to be sent home will now be able to challenge that if they've got tamariki and whānau mm. and they've been living there for a long time. How do you interpret this in development? hugely significant for mm. Fano Māori who are already uh, in Australia. Uh, for one, they'll be eligible for a whole lot of things that they weren't before. So welfare, ACC or their equivalent if they uh, adapt. We've all had Fano friends who've had to come home because of those things. They either lose work or they become injured at work and they have to come home because there is no support for them. Mm. Um, very significant in, in the sector that I work in, in, in terms of education and youth justice is I've had numerous meetings with politicians in Australia who've said that one of the most um, serious demographics in terms of youth offenders are Māori and Pacifica young people at the equivalent of year 11, 12 and 13 who see no future for themselves because they are shut out of tertiary education. Mm. So the ability to, to borrow money for education is a huge uh, benefit to, the, to those uh, rangatahi. What do you think it might mean for people whose skills we desperately desperately need like nurses and doctors and teachers and engineers? I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, there's a whole bunch of reasons why people leave. Um, most of it's economic issues, but other things are about they just don't like what they live in. Um, you could be a nurse in Australia and maybe there's a promise and, yeah. over there that says um, a better lifestyle. You, you know, I've seen, I've heard so many success stories about our whanau that go over there with nothing, mm. um, that are beneficiaries, and now they're just doing really, really well. They're in the mines, they have a trade, they're employed, uh, and I think, well, we need to celebrate that as a success for them because Aotearoa wasn't doing anything for them. I just worry about the, you know, the uh, it, it, in terms of if, if they're going over as beneficiaries, I don't want them to be beneficiaries in Australia. There has to be a purpose for they go over there. So I celebrate the fact that they're moving on to a better life. Mm. I get that. I, I don't know whether I'm, I'm also either sort of reconciled with the fact that they'll go over there and do the same things that they're doing here over there. So, yeah, I, just, I want to watch that space. I mean, the, 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 the stories of our people prospering over there, there's just so many to, 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 not, to not take okay. note of. Mm. Yeah, I think we all have those stories mm. in our families of our mm. whānau going over there for mm. whatever reason with not much and mm. turning out with quite a lot. Mm. So, yeah, mm. all power to them. Uh, the government is calling the upcoming budget a no-frills approach. Chris Hipkins is promising to fund the annual operation, uh, operating capital allowance using uh, savings and debt to pay for the cyclone recovery. Um, he said there will be no levies, no new taxes. This despite the IRD's report on the country's wealthiest families, uh, which documents how they significantly significantly pay less tax overall. Is this a miss op missed opportunity, do you think? Absolutely it is. So the, that uh, piece of research was enabled by mm. a change to the legislation in 2020, which is, uh, allows mandatory disclosure of, of income uh, and assets to enable politicians and, and the government to make tax policy. You don't you can't you can't make changes yep. to changes to tax settings without knowing exactly how much potential income there is. So I think it absolute this is exactly what those changes were for. We now know how much wealth there is um, in the hands of so few. Absolutely this is an opportunity for, for them to to you know really tax some of the wealthy. Mm. Um, Christopher Luxon's talking about the, the pushed or tight middle, and he's really talking about a middle that's well above the middle that we know about. Exactly. Yeah. Why, why are they saying that they won't? Why is there no tax, uh, capital gains when, you know, these are, this is probably a group of people who are very unlikely to vote in the middle anyway? Well, I had a couple of conversations with some trusted people about what, the, what we're going on about with, with capital gains tax. And, and, and 
it, for the reason, I mean, it, it's an unfair tax system, but, but what I, the conclusion I came to is actually this kind of wealth that we talk about is just beyond us. It's certainly foreign to my communities. I mean, we're still sort of working around the 27 or 20 odd percent tax yep. income bracket because we're low income. Mm. And we are starting to get into the middle income space where we're expected to pay more tax than anyone else. So if, if people are saying that it's an unfair tax system because the, the rich, um, for, for a whole bunch of reasons, are able to do what they do and they go where they go, then absolutely it needs to be it needs to make sure that it's an even playing field. But just note, eh? Mm. Gee, our people are still struggling just to get into the middle income. And I know there's a growing class of them, but very, very foreign to how you can sort of shift things around so you don't have to pay your share of tax. So I just note that as, as my sort of contribution to capital gains tax. Mm. Do you know, we're, we're <laughs> going to go straight to the end because I, I don't want to miss this, but you're both based in Tāmaki Makaurau. What do you make of the candidates lining up for this election? Be next up. So I've got to declare my interest, I'm part of the Labour Party, Māori um, cohort. And the only thing that we have to put, worry about, and not only just as our current incumbent, but also us as a whānau, is, um, is complacency. Mm. Um, we have a strong candidate with um, Penny. He have a strong brand, but we shouldn't just expect that's going to be enough to get us across the line. I know that my whanaunga from Manirewa Marae has put her hand up. What she brings is a, is a strong rangatahi following because she's worked in rangatahi, in the rangatahi space for, for a number of years. Also, she um, has a, a strong following, a growing following around the, 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 the Manirewa Māori community. So we just need to be cognizant of that. Um, and, and even the Greens have always sort of played uh, enough to sort of disrupt Mm. Some of our people's thinking in terms of either, is it going to be ourselves or the party Māori? So I think um, at, at the moment the incumbent's a favourite, but he's got a lot of work to do and complacency will be his biggest enemy. We well, both have um, kids at university who are involved, you know, heavily involved in Ngātauera Māori and Kaupapa Māori and um, are talking, you know, about climate change mm. and all those kinds of things. When Bernie says that uh, Takutai Moana Kemp, who mm. is standing for Te Pāti Māori, has a following with the younger people, do you think they're going to manage to pull them in? I think there's potential disruption, mm. particularly with Marama not, not running mm. for the Greens. I think she, she kept Penny honest to some extent mm. uh, in the last election. Well, so she was a strong candidate. She was a very strong candidate. But uh, I, think, I think the bottom line is, is probably a clear run home for Penny mm. at this election. He's done a good job. But I do think Te Pāti Māori is, mm. is looking strong in both Waiariki and Te Hauaru. Mm. So, um, you know, a, a good, and Tash is a very well-known candidate in, in Tāmaki. Mm. What are the big challenges for Tāmaki Makaurau, do you think, in terms of, you know, in terms of the election? What do, what do they need to be talking to our people about? Well, interesting, given that we now have a minister for, for Auckland, so, and we know all of the kaupapa that he's uh, been tasked to look at, and, and mm. there's been such a strong focus on the council that I think, to some extent, a central government has been sort of off the, off the table there in terms of, obviously, transport, housing, mm. infrastructure. Um, so th those are the kaupapa. Mm. Mm. So just interesting, as Minister for Auckland and Minister for Tamaki Makaurau, not necessarily the same minister, okay. uh, same space, but, but, you know, the housing stuff is, is still priority because it's based on poverty. And are, are we worry about the, the proliferation of housing, that's, uh, the social housing, which is just building new ghettos. Mm. So that's one of the key, key concerns. Poverty, as we know it, even though we might upgrade it with new housing, is still poverty. And, and the, the thing that's really real now for us after the storms in, in Gabriel is, is um, global warming. Mm. And the, it's, it's the aftermath that, that our communities have to, yes. to deal with. Thank heavens for organisations like Whānau Order that are sort of prioritising Māori and Pacifica communities in that space. And our marae. And our marae. Mm. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so those are the key things that we need to look at. Things haven't changed too much apart from the global warming stuff, warming stuff which, is, um, which is real. And that actually may move some of those traditional Labour Māori voters to the Greens. Yes. Very good point. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we're seeing a lot of advertising around the Māori option. Um, if someone's out there and not sure what to do, what, what's your advice to them? Well, I think you have to be quite strategic. So the the fact that you can now you change switch. option uh, before 1st of July, I think it is, um, that's a really positive move. And be strategic. Some of those seats are safe, some of them aren't. Uh, you know, Nationals coming in to run some candidates in the in the Māori seat. So it, it's always really about... Have we heard of any yet? Carl, don't... 
Haratihi Pango, she's standing Aye. for Te Tai Hauaru, but we don't know about Tamaki Makoto. But anyway, so you'd say for them yeah, do to you, Do your get homework registered. in terms of, you know, look at the pattern, voting patterns in respect of your, your electorate, understand how MMP works in terms of the power of your party vote. Um, and, and that's quite interesting. I'm having those conversations with my mm. with my kids who are, you know, one mm. voting for the first time and one for a second time. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity to have some civics education. Exa exactly, mm. and tell their friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, has Haretihi Pango got a chance in Tai Hau Aru? Yeah, no. No, okay. No, and no, not with Debbie Pecker and, um, and um, uh, Tawa Wahine or Rata Saraya. Mason. Saraya. Saraya. Mason. Yeah. And that, and I think uh, she's a very will good she, candidate. Will she disrupt it, though? Um, the, the problem is the brand of national is not strong. Mm. Uh, whereas the party, in a, in a Māori context, the party Māori and Labour are very strong brands, and that's what uh, Hedity is up against. Mm. I think that's going to be interesting. And just, just your note around, we, we need to start to think strategic. The political parties are thinking strategic. Mm. You know, they say two ticks for Labour or two ticks for whatever. Yeah. But actually, if you start to see how it all works, there is an argument that the, the, the Labour Party and Party Māori are all, almost on the same page. Yes. And now people need to think about that as well in terms of what a strategic... You could argue it all started with two ticks, Tuku, to two be fair, in 1996. Two, yeah. But um, <laughs> what's your advice to young people or Māori who um, are now seeing ads about, you know, switching roles? What, what, what would you say to them? Well, I think they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. I think they're a lot more politically astute in terms of where they should be. But their space is a bit different than ours, mm. eh? So we sort of grew up in that sort of trauma struggle space where they're in a different space. So all I'm saying to you, to, to them, and, and I, just to make sure that you enrol, it's the first thing, and, and you'll vote with your heart. Because the things that are important to you are important to you. And so Ko te me nui just be enrolled, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> e mihi ana ki a kōrua, tēnā kōrua. Yeah. Uh, ko te tino, uh, ko te tehi tino uara tanga o te aho matua o ngā kura kaupapa Māori. Kia tupu ngā āhua tanga tuku iho o ngā pūmanua o te tamaiti ki te tihi teitei o te taumata. Tamariki wāwahi taha, ara takina ki te māta, puna o te mōhio o te ora o te maungārongo. Tēnei ka mihi ki ngā mātā puna o te mōhio i hono mai ki a mata i tēnei rā. Tēnā rā koutou katoa. Ka nui te mihi ki te puna whakatonga rewa me te māngai pāho. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in a fortnight. No hōra mai.